Hi, this is Adrian Helfert, CIO of Multi-Asset at Westwood. Thank you for joining. Wanted to talk quickly about some of the pressures we're seeing in the environment today and that started at the tail end of last week. We came into last week talking about the pressure Fed Chair Jerome Powell would face at his Senate hearing to not increase regulation of the banking sector. We ended the week with the second largest bank failure in U.S. history, the government guaranteeing uninsured deposits over the weekend and the Fed taking collateral of underwater assets. So let's talk about what happened with Silicon Valley Bank. A crisis of confidence. Banking is confidence, number one. Their basic business is to hold assets, that's their deposits, and use those assets to support lending with higher yielding and higher duration securities. That's their liabilities. Silicon Valley Bank lost that confidence of their depositors when they unexpectedly announced a series of transactions to bolster their capital, their balance sheet, and their funding, and they scared their depositors. They were becoming concerned about their balance sheet and funding, and rising rates have led to mostly unrealized losses of their liabilities, unrealized losses on bonds that they hold. Rates go up as they have been. Bond prices go down. That's their liabilities. That has negatively impacted the strength of their balance sheet. If you can hold a maturity on a U.S. Treasury, everybody gets their par back. They get uh, 100 cents on the dollar. In the nearer term, though, when rates go up, bond prices have been dropping, and you can only hold a maturity if your depositors stick around long enough for you to continue to hold those investments. So in some, in some sense, what we are seeing is the first real impact of substantial money supply contraction. Deposits have been dropping. Silicon Valley sold U.S. Treasuries at a loss to build that gap and then sought to raise more capital. Depositors got nervous and they started pulling their deposits in mass. In this case, Silicon Valley Bank has a high deposit concentration, much higher than their peers. They source the vast majority of their deposits from venture capital backed companies. That deposit concentration leads to higher funding stress than most other banks. Thus, we had the second largest bank failure in US history in the banking system, then, what we've seen is the potential for systematic risk. It's led to a negative impact in confidence and a look for who might be next. That landscape is changing in now, now in real time. But one of the most important changes we have seen over the weekend is the Federal Reserve, uh, in coordination with the U.S. Treasury and the FDIC, seeking to limit the damage of this in the future by taking underwater treasuries as collateral and holding them at par for other banks that might run into other situations or a run on the bank. So now let's think about what the knock-on effects might be. Well, obviously we've had a bit of a crisis in confidence and that negative impact on confidence across the banking system is already evident. Large depositors are moving capital around to be within the FDIC $250,000 limit. So they don't have uninsured deposits. They're investing in U.S. Treasury bonds directly and moving to banks with less concern of funding issues. There are significant macroeconomic impacts here as well, primarily the question of, oh gosh, well, how fast can the Federal Reserve now raise the Fed funds rate? And can they continue to raise it at a high rate with inflation, given the stress that has put on the banking sector and the impacts that might see? What we're seeing now is the delayed effect of the dramatic Fed funds rate increase that we've seen since early 2022. If the Fed's hand is forced to pause their rate hikes or even potentially cut rates, there are sectors of the market that will benefit from that action. There could be concern within the banking system that spreads outside of the banking system. Depositors that are being made whole now certainly had a weekend where their palms were sweaty. That was an uncomfortable weekend for them. There were a lot of uninsured deposits across the industry. For credit, this could lead to a higher default rate. This is focused on companies that have near-term funding needs at a time when funding is becoming uh, more scarce and the cost of funding is becoming more expensive. Those companies that need to roll their liabilities to borrow quickly to pay maturing liabilities may have more difficulty doing so. Always what opportunities does this present? Dislocations in confidence can lead to safer opportunities being mis mispriced at an individual level. Systematic risk, which is what we've seen where 
the concern that if it's one, it could be all leads to mispricing generally of individual selections. I like to call it the baby thrown out with the bathwater that may also simply not have as much exposure as others. I talked about Silicon Valley Bank being very aggregated in who their depositors are. Other banks have much more diversification in their deposit base, yet they are experiencing similar funding stress. In credit in particular, funding maturities of companies is likely to become an investment focal point. Those that have near-term maturities may look to be more risky. Opportunities will arise, we believe, in lending it a good compensation to those companies that have a lower funding risk. And yes, we can earn a strong yield as a result. Uh, our funds don't hold any exposure to Silicon Valley Bank. Financial services is a key segment of the investment universe that we invest in. And generally, we're looking for investment opportunities where fundamental value is mispriced. This is a good environment for us. Within the financial sector, especially banking, this means an evaluation of metrics like capital strength, funding pressures, and deposit growth. We analyze our company's abilities to meet potential deposits and their withdrawal request. That's the liquidity and funding levels in stressed situations. That's their capital. And as prices change rapidly in this environment, that's great for fundamental selectors like us to find the ways to capture value where it becomes mispriced. Thanks for listening. We'll continue to communicate changes and thoughts as the environment changes. See you soon.